I'm going to present a case study to you to show you the type of work I do. But first, let's think about what we understand by occupational therapy and the part it plays in patients' recovery. In simple terms therapists like the help patients of all ages to participate in the things they want or need to do through the therapeutic use of a range of recognized activities. For example, this could be, helping patients, who are recovering from illness or injury to regain skills and get back to work or it could be supporting older adults who are going through physical and cognitive changes. I always have to keep in mind, however, is what the individual wants to achieve. I always say that a doctor's first question is, what's the matter with you? Whereas my first question is, what matters to you, now on to my case study. It involves a patient called Brian a 60 year old man whose motorbike was in collision with a car. Luckily, the accident happened at moderate speed but he still suffered compound fractures in both legs in one arm and several broken ribs. When I first met him after two weeks in hospital. He was physically and emotionally broken after all, not only was his mobility in, question, but much more so, is his doctors had told him, like never be able to squeeze into his motorbike levers again, so he'd given up, imagine how he must have felt one day totally independent and the next suddenly unable to do things anymore. Ted showed little interest in receiving treatment, some colleagues at the hospital, took the view that if he stubbornly refused to help himself there, was little they could do. It was his right. They said, but I didn't agree since Ted couldn't use his legs or right arm. I made sure we concentrated on what he could do with his left hand. For example, I worked on strategies to help him dress himself and things like that. We even worked on fine motor skills. Writing with his left hand. I wanted to make sure that even if he didn't ever regain use, of his right arm, I could at least get him to function by whatever other means were open to him. So, how did my therapy help? Well, I worked with Ted on his hands. Putting playing cards on a table and getting him to pick one up, which he couldn't do, but he then resorted to sliding the cards on the table and picking them up that way. Finding a way of compensating for what he couldn't do. He'd, become upset about what he felt, was his lack of progress relearning to do things, you used to do with, these can be frustrating. But in time, I got him to see that if you didn't work with me, then he'd stay as he was for the rest of his life. And that was a big motivating factor. Ted had therapy for 8 months and he had his ups and downs. For example, the day when he finally had the plaster, casts removed from his legs. He built it up in his mind into a great step towards independence. In reality, of course, it wasn't. He was still unable to stand because he lost a lot of strength and the doctors were still predicting. He'd remain in a wheelchair. Although I'd warned him about all this that moment still came as a big disappointment. But strangely, when something like that happens, it can be a turning point. Like many patients, Ted became even more determined to regain mobility after that. You know, the tenth story, had a happy ending. He's now back at home and back at work, to learning to walk. Again took every ounce of energy he had but patients like dead with that fighting spirit, go from strength to strength after discharge. That's where the support of family can be, invaluable. As long as they don't inhibit the patient by warning them of potential dangers at every turn. But patients, like Ted tend to take charge of their own. Ongoing recovery gym membership therapy regime, that kind of thing. Seeing that gives me a real sense of pride in the work. I do. And the difference it can make to people. Chagas is caused by a parasite called Trypanosoma gruzi. Most, sufferers become infected when they're bitten by an insect commonly known as the kissing bug which carries the parasite, right? People often don't realize they've been bitten and during the initial phase of the infection symptoms are normally mild or absent. Okay. 70% of those infected never developed complications for the other 30% that disease tends to remain silent for a long time, often 30 years. But it eventually enters our chronic phase characterized by serious cardiac digestive system and neurological disorders. About 7 million people worldwide are thought to have but it attracts relatively little publicity or funding for research. 
This indifference is largely down to it being primarily a disease of marginalized communities. In Latin America where it's endemic, you need, resources, divorce significant action, right? I see and do there any concerns in the USA? The parasite is actually endemic to the southern US states since 1955. However, no more than 30 people have been bitten and infected while in the USA. The alarming thing though, is that it's become apparent that large numbers of first generation and some second generation immigrants from Latin America. These, people won't infect others apart from congenitally and possibly through transfusion but a significant proportion of chronically ill. And for the benefit of our listeners, can you describe an individual case? Well, this year a Bolivian woman? Let's call her Sylvia. Asked me if she could be tested for Chagas. She's a long-term US resident, but she recently been on vacation in Bolivia. And at one point she had felt unwell. This often occurs with changes in diet and living conditions and that's what Marisol assumed cause she'd actually been planning to donate blood in Bolivia, but changed her mind at the last minute. Ironically, if she'd gone ahead, the screening would have detected Chagas hearing from relatives that Chagas can be transmitted. Congenitally was what prompted Sylvia to come, to my clinic. She and her partner, wanted to start a family and she was scared that, she might pass the parasite on tests then showed she did indeed have intermediate stage shiches and what issues can arise. I've been treating chakras. Well, another patient. I'll call her Jenny felt unwell, following a vacation in a region. Where Chagas is endemic tests indicated. She was shocked as positive. Jenny, was then referred to my clinic where we do further tests. Meanwhile, she looked up shoppies online and understandably was distressed by what she read. Why me? She wants it to me. She was also fearful about taking Ben's knee does. All the main drug used for shock. Because it has potentially harmful side effects for optimum impact. It should be taken in the first two months of the disease. But by the time the testing had been completed ten weeks have passed since the likely. And do you deal with patients in later stages of the illness? Yes. I have a 62 year old patient called one eight years ago. He was diagnosed with dilated cardiomyopathy. She and Chagas was also detected in him. If he'd been tested for Chagas earlier in his life is long term. Prospects would have been better. But year after the diagnosis one was found to have type 2 diabetes. This was dealt with relatively. Well, though, his body did initially reject insulin want of drugs, for his heart. And for several years, was reasonably stable, but eventually monitoring revealed, severe cardiac deterioration his experiences. Much what you'd expect in someone who's had the disease for years, and it's reached the latter stages, there's no cure and the main recommendations are rest exercise and appropriate diet. I see and what can be done to combat sharpest. Generally, plenty researchers are working on improved drugs, to treat it and a vaccine. None currently exists, but it takes at least 10 years to supply a new drug. Another idea is to develop the existing drugs in tablets of different. That could end. Be done, almost, overnight. What's currently available is designed for adults, even though infants often have the disease. There are also some very important programs using insecticides and other methods to wipe out the bugs that transfer shock has to humans, but initiatives like those take decades.